Well, we are back for the third session of the evening. I'm Sergio, with me here is Cedric, and right now we have a really interesting uh, conversation with two of the most top umpires in the world, but I will let them present themselves. We have Carolina de la Fuente and Martin Grotza. Uh, Martin, if you want to start just giving a brief introduction about yourself, where you come from, why umpiring. Um, yeah, sure. Uh, hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Martin. I come from Poland. I'm an international umpire, uh, and I'm uh, very happy to have this opportunity to join you this evening. Hi, guys. I'm Carolina. I'm from Argentina. I've been in my international career for more than 20 years, and I'm, I'm retired. Uh, Tokyo was my last uh, international tournament, but uh, well, I'm happy to be here to have this uh, chat with all of you. Amazing. Uh, first one question that I want to, to ask, because uh, maybe for you, Carolina, being in Argentina, which is uh, kind of one of the biggest countries in terms of people playing the sport and being related with the sport, uh, but I want to ask you, Martin, uh, how was it coming from Poland and developing the sport there? And how did you end up being an international empire coming from where you Amazing. come from? Amazing. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, it's uh, um, I, I've picked up sport in my in my school. There was a really passionate coach that kind of uh, got a group of kids together and, and that started playing hockey. Uh, and I, I played myself for uh, six, seven years. Um, and we even won some uh, youth medals in the kind of youth Polish championship. But I wasn't an exceptional player. I was uh, average at best. Um, I mean, brutal honesty. And uh, I kind of uh, can assess myself uh, here. Uh, and, uh, you know, I, I, I also had to, I was going to university, so there was like a transition time for me and I wanted to stay connected with sport. And that's why, um, I was, uh, I was offered or I was asked if I maybe want to pick up umpiring and, you know, then from year to year and from one category to another, I, uh, I, I, I did more and, and more, um, more matches, uh, uh, more senior categories, then I was asked to, to go for a, a youth international tournament. And that's kind of the, the natural way of uh, umpire developing uh, um, over years. Uh, I'm not sure what, I mean, Carolina's stories might be the same or might be different, but at some stage, I think I was, I, I was lucky as well. I think luck is a big part of uh, anyone's uh, journey. Uh, and, and I was noticed. Uh, I, I, I joined a, a European umpires development program uh, in 2007, uh, that kind of gave me a, a little bit more tools and kind of a, a better framework. And uh, and then also year from year, I kind of, you know, developed and, and grew into the empire that I am uh, and today. And obviously, as I said, luck has something to do with it, but also there was a lot of hard work and, and commitment and sacrifices along the way. So that's a long story short. <laughs> What about you, Carolina? How was your 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 travel and your journey until you made up that point? Well, I think in one part we are lucky in Argentina because we have a very good level of hockey, so that was very good for for me. But in the other hand, because we are in the other side of the world, it was very difficult for me or for the Argentina party to get tournaments to to go and to show us as umpires but as Marcin said it's like a, a journey I started to umpire it because as him I wasn't good enough to still uh, working in in a high level so I say how can I be in, enjoying this or be part of the game so I decided to stop playing and, and started to umpire. Um, well, uh, I always enjoyed uh, uh, many people in those years 
told me, Carolina, start to speak English because you have the chance to be an international umpire. I said, what's that mean? I was, uh, I don't know what they were talking about. And then I'm very happy because uh, I follow that uh, advice. And I think it was good for, for me to, to be part of this world, the, the hockey family. Uh, in this uh, important and uh, excited uh, role. If I may speak for myself, um, I find it quite, quite difficult to find younger people who want to be an umpire. Um, can you find or do you know a, know a way how to motivate young people to be an umpire? Um, it's quite hard, I think. Um, Yes, I agree. I think I, uh, we see that in, in many different countries. I mean, for, for young people to pick up a, a whistle and, and become an umpire. Although I think that there's been exceptions and that has been changing. Um, I think the the biggest selling point, let's say, for uh, if I would have to make one is, you know, um, you if you're you get to experience the sport, uh, you get to be part of it on the pitch. Um, in a way that kind of gives you options that playing wouldn't. I, as a as a Polish player, I would never go to Olympic Games. As a as a Polish umpire, um, I went to three. Um, so um, and uh, so that's just one part. That just just one part. Another part is uh, meeting all those great people along the road. Uh, Carolina said it's a journey. Um, and it is, and there's so many people on that journey that you meet, that you hang out with, that become your, uh, close friends. Uh, so it's, it's, it's kind of a, a completely new experience and, a, and, a, an opportunity for someone to, to, to do and be, be great. And even if you're not great, it's, it's to just get a new experience. Yes. yes. It's, it's like being part of a team. Don't, don't, it's not important where is the step where you are or which tournament you get during your journey the the important thing is to enjoy each match each opportunity that you have to to do what you what you know to do that is umpiring it's it's like that, is that and we have to and we and we have to kind of love it because uh, you know we, we're we're volunteers as well in, in a sense um, so, and we do it for the, for the love of, of sport. Uh, we all have our other uh, jobs uh, that we have to do. We have family at home and, and hockey is, is another element that, you know, you need, you want to kind of juggle, but it gives us a great pleasure. It's so much fun to, to do that. Is that Carolina, the thing that you enjoy the most? You were talking about uh, being on the crowd also, Martin, you were saying the, the possibility of coming from Poland being an international event and being surrounded by the sport you love. What is the the thing that you enjoy the most? Not only about being an umpire, but being an umpire of hockey. Uh, from I think for me, the important thing is to find your own balance. In my case, I enjoy being in a very good match, but I enjoy to to help other umpire to have his or her best match, or I enjoy watch a, a match from outside and celebrate when others umpire have a good one. And really, I really enjoy uh, knowing places. So and stop working. So I work in a bank. I have a lot of responsibility. And when I go to a tournament, I block all my uh, formal life and then I go to a tournament without nothing in my back. So I feel like an Olympic athlete. And I'm only an Olympic uh, official, you know? I wouldn't say only. I mean, like, uh, I mean, we can be modest, but I think uh, uh, getting to, to that kind of uh, level, it also takes a lot of uh, commitment. And 
you know, we, we, we going to Olympics, that's a pinnacle for any umpire. That's a, the top, just like it is for athletes uh, and being part of the group and, and, and also experiencing in, with, with people that were, were on that road with you, that, that travel that road, the, the people you, you, you've been on the, let's say, tour for, for years that you grew th- uh, through ranks together. That that's just makes it uh, so much special, so special. What would be your advice for an empire in a country without a big domestic league to get good enough for a top level? I guess that's uh, that that would be for uh, for me. Uh, um, and I saw that came through through the chat. Um, it's tough to say, really. It, it takes a commitment. It it, uh, it it requires doing a lot of hockey, trying to to kind of uh, be good enough in your domestic league uh, to be considered for international appointments. Uh, potentially, if in Europe, uh, then trying to be to get nominated by your federation into the EHF programs for for umpires, uh, which is I think umpires for Europe. Then there is a UDP. There's a whole development structure that can, that the people can take benefit of or take advantage of, um, but it starts with with kind of working hard and kind of also uh, building enough tools at home to be able to handle matches internationally. Because uh, uh, going to that next level, once you kind of go to that tournament, very often you already have to prove yourself. So so kind of building a good base. And a good foundation for what you do uh, or where you want to go is, I think, uh, key. We have a question here uh, for Carolina, uh, but I guess, Martin, you can answer as well. How, how do you manage fitness through your empowering career if you have any tips? Uh, and I would add how important in terms of being fit is to, to be empire. Nice, good question. Uh, when I think is um, a huge change since that I'm started, I think the hockey changed and the empires had the responsibility to change as well. Uh, so I think is one of the most important points in this moment. Maybe when I started, it was not a very a point that you need to work on. If you just run or, or you play some sport was okay, but now you need to plan your own plan to be fit. And what do you need? Because maybe I need different uh, work than than Marcin because he her body is different than mine but I think you need to plan um, for me it was important to have a team to fill in so because I don't like to play hockey anymore really because uh, because I was not good I didn't enjoy so I start to run uh, I'm part of a running team so this changed my my way of uh, of train, uh, my way of uh, eat, and a lot of uh, a lot of uh, things change in my life. But uh, I try to to get into my normal life. So I enjoy running, going to 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 races in the mountain. So I'm, it's not a stressful for me thing that I'm doing something special for hockey. That's what works on me. I know that there are others that need a very um, uh, hard training only uh, with the focus on hockey, but it depends uh, how you manage in your personal life. And I think I'll uh, also resonate what what Carolina said. Um, it's um, the, the the whole fitness regime that we have to follow has has changed over the last uh, few years. It it used to be 
a preparation sometimes from tournament to tournament. Now with Pro League uh, present, we have to maintain our fitness throughout the year. Um, and uh, so it's not very, you don't, you just train throughout the year. If you have appointments or you don't have appointments, you just keep going. You you do the program that, that works for you. Uh, is it running like Carolina? I, I like running I, I as, as well. I, um, I've i actually clocked quite a few kilometers as a preparation Tokyo. But then also there is gym. Some people do bike. Some people do swimming pool. Uh, so it's it's all those different elements that are tailored for uh, uh, f- for individual needs or whatever kind of helps you stay stay fit it's not like in the team um that where you have one training plan for all and and with small variations uh, um for for different players we uh, have to pass tests uh, every two three months in the year uh a certain test uh, it's a it's a yo-yo test it's a it's a sprint uh, that we have to do we can uh, have to set, send our uh, body measurements um to FIH and that's being constantly monitored so we, we have to uh, make sure that we kind of don't, uh, you know, fall behind, that, that we get the, the results or we hit the benchmarks that, that are required. Because if, if we don't, that can affect our future appointments. I think that, that's super interesting. We'll go back in a minute about uh, training and, and how you prepare for important events and regular season. But I wanted to ask you, Carolina, how was it that you, you were saying that you weren't good enough to be a player, but you still kept the love for hockey? So I wanted to ask you if that's a possibility. I, I, of course it is because you did it, but how was it for you? Excuse me, I don't understand the question. Yeah, so so you said that you were not good enough to be yes. a player, yes. Uh, yes. but you still somehow kept the love for the sport and you become an empire. How was that uh, not loving while playing, but still liking the sport? Um, I think uh, I like uh, be part of, and that was the important thing. Uh, fair at the club, I love to be with my with my friends, but I don't like to play. So, okay, what can I do? So I started just being an umpire because the first years you umpire your own team. Then when I decided to stop, then you um, umpire as a neutral umpire. And I think that was the, the key of my my career. Mm-hmm. I, I, I was asking because when mostly when you're young it feels like it's either playing or there's nothing else so i wanted to, to for you to give a, 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 an explanation on the multiple options that there is and the multiple choices that you have whether that's being an empire a leader a coach or, or many different things yes uh going back to 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 training and on working out uh do you have uh in between you umpires, little tips and tricks that help you out and that you all share between you in terms of fitness, nutrition, or this guy is really good for helping you prepare for an event, or is it more like on your own or between two or three people? Um, so I, um, I'll start maybe, I mean, uh, we, there's no tips. There's no tricks. Uh, it's it's pure fitness. You you can't kind of work your way around it, uh, unfortunately. Um, but uh, our umpires managers. So as a example, uh, in our preparation to Tokyo, our uh, umpire manager from Australia, Minka, Minka. Um, she, she she would uh, prepare uh, a full kind of decks and dossier and information packs about. Uh, send us YouTube videos, how to best prepare for the uh, for the test that we have to do, what type of training we should be doing, what's the proper nutrition, uh, how to prepare for Tokyo weather, all those kind of uh, suggestions you would have that to kind of get us there in the in the best possible shape. Um, so so that that was pretty much uh, that was pretty much it for the for the tournament. Yes. 
we got a question uh, from the audience. Um, what's your favorite position of uh, being an umpire? Is it on the pitch itself, or is it a, or as a video umpire? Carolina. Carolina. Ah, from myself. Uh, well, when I start to umpire, it doesn't exist the video system. So for me, it was a very uh, topic that I, in those years, I had to work because as far I wasn't good enough, even starting on the field, how to manage this situation. And so I think I had been umpire for, for many years because I have the, the how do you say, um, the ability, the, the ability to, to change my, my head and to think that the video was a, a tool for me on the field. That's one point. But uh, really, I, I, I have never enjoyed being a video umpire. I, I think I do not have the time to be there to, to feel it as a, as a, on the field. So for me, very clear that I prefer to be on the field. Um, I, I used to prefer pitch a lot, um, and I probably still do. My, I would kind of lean toward pitch position. But uh, that said, video uh, being video is, is is also rewarding at times. Uh, it's a, it's a kind of interesting to be part of that yeah. kind of setup. Um, but if I have to pick one, I would go with Carolina and just go on a pitch. And I think nowadays, because we are the same umpires that are on the field, could be reserved and could be video, video. now we feel like a team. Uh, that, I think, is a good point uh, now. When, we, when you umpire, you feel that on the screen or on the, I don't know, on the video, you have one more uh, colleague working for you, helping us. So that is very good. So, so then we have uh, teams of umpires that could change positions and could change teams, but that they go mostly together. And would that mean that you could specialize in being a, a video umpire or a turf umpire? So, so that, that was the case a couple of years back. Uh, at, at Re, uh, in Rio at the Olympics, we had uh, um, specialized video umpires, um, and it would be uh, two in a men tournament and two in the women, um, and they worked all the games. Uh, but the setup has now kind of transitioned into we bring so in Tokyo, you bring 14 uh, umpires for each of the two tournaments. Um, and out of that 14 or 15, you uh, you pick four for each game. Um, and it, you could, so I could end up doing video reserve or being one of the two guys on the pitch. Um, so probably you would have to ask someone that analyzed the, the, the system and, and made the decision uh, why. But I, it's actually good to be on the other side because that also gives you a really good understanding when you're downstairs on the pitch uh, of what's happening behind the scenes, what you can expect. And it's also um, kind of being in someone else's shoes um, that, that kind of uh, helps you get a good understanding of, of uh, and kind of empathy for the process. Can you guys think of uh, one maybe difficult scenario you had during a game or during a tournament, um, and how did you react on this on this scenario on this moment? How did you feel and how did you uh, react to the players, to your umpire manager, to to anyone? Um. I'll let you, Caroline. I'll let you think, and I'll I'll, I'll quickly jump with uh, with you. one. Um, like, there's probably uh, uh, quite a few I could uh, pick from. Um, it's it's kind of uh, 
being an umpire sometimes comes with those kind of difficult moments uh, and, and getting through those, it's kind of a big part of the experience, the journey. Um, I think I was a uh, couple, well, 10 years ago, I was, uh, or maybe even 15, I was just starting my career um, and I, I made some bad calls in the very uh, end of the game and it probably affected the, the result. Um, and I think what, what was important is uh, in, in that kind of situation was to kind of go back, analyze um, what happened, why it happened. Was I in the wrong position or was I not fit enough? And at the end of the game, suddenly I lost my fitness and focus or maybe, um, you know, there was too much. I, I lost focus. I mean, there are so many different elements that you have to look at. As a, And now with video, there is some help that, that we can uh, use and analyze our performance. Uh, but at the same time, also being very open about it, not being arrogant about mistakes that we, we do and not kind of closing yourself uh, from outside world. Um, I think admitting to those mistakes is also a big part uh, of, of the, the kind of, let's call it, healing <laughs> process um, and being very open with players and coaches. Um, and sometimes they might not understand it at that time, being very emotional and, and kind of the frustration and uh, that, that kind of happens in the game. Uh, but later on, when there is a moment, kind of having a, a proper conversation. Uh, and sometimes it also takes saying, I'm, I'm sorry, um, because it's going to, it's a cliche, but we all make mistakes. Um, and, and, but it's a good cliche. So I'm, I'm going to use it. Um, so, so it, that's kind of um, my thoughts. <laughs> okay, good. Um, well, about me, um, I think the important thing, as Martin say, is to to analyze the whole situation and try to to see if. The mistake was part of the game because the players make mistakes and sometimes we make mistakes. The important thing is to, to know if we sleep well, we were well prepared, uh, we were on the correct spot and if we prepare with our colleagues the match and all this stuff. From my point of view, uh, was very important during my career and and because I made many, many mistakes during that, because it was many, many years, was a thing in that way. Uh, as a player, I'm part of the game and I made mistake too. But try to feel um, uh, calm because in, I think most of the time I arrive to a tournament or to a match uh, as uh, as in the best way as I can arrive, as prepared as, as I can. So I think was a good point or a good feeling to to maintain and to enjoy the journey. Nice, nice, really, really interesting answers. We'll move now uh, to some uh, questions from the audience. But before I wanted to ask you before you were saying because you were saying now, Carolina. Uh, the importance of staying calm and Martin about uh, knowing that everyone makes mistakes. And I think hockey, one of the key elements that it has and that makes it a really cool sport is that we are quite respectful with each other and with umpires specifically compared to other sports that are maybe a little bit bigger as basketball or even soccer, American football or other sports. Uh, and my question would be, do you see hockey as a big sport or developing sets as big as other sports such as soccer, but maintaining that attitude, for example, with the umpires? Or do you think those are those thing, two things that cannot coexist and when you grow as a sport, you have those tri triviality and, and team members being... Uh, I think we need to, to copy the good example I like to, to think as in a rugby, 
I think Iraqi is one of the most uh, excited uh, and the, the level of the rugby is very good and the, re the relationship between the players and the umpire for me is where we need to go. Um, it's funny Carolina mentioned rugby because that was exactly the, the same uh, example I was going to give. Um, I, I don't think we should uh, benchmark ourselves uh, against uh, football. I think football is way beyond anyone, anyone else, anyone's reach. Any sport, no other sport will kind of match that uh, that level. And it's 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 almost a business now. It's it's not really a, a sport at this at, at the highest level. Uh, I love watching rugby, uh, like Carolina said, for the respect uh, between players and uh, the referees. Um, I, I love watching rugby and I'm not coming from a rugby country. Um, so there's no tradition of doing that, but it's just a nice sport, nicely packaged sport. Uh, and, uh, that whole family atmosphere and also at the stands, how it's, uh, how it's being, uh, sold, let's say, uh, is, is, is something, uh, that I, I, I really enjoy. So, um, I think hockey has that potential, but it, it's going to take uh, so quite a few years, probably, and, and also uh, going to take a kind of uh, very um, smart people to do that because it, it's not easy. I mean, there are so many sports competing for that audience and uh, the, the attention span of an average uh, teenager is, is kind of uh, dropping uh, and, and kind of, you know, they, they, even uh, football is talking about kind of shortening the um, the kind of length of a, of a football match to, purely because uh, to make it more attractive for the, for the younger audience. So um, it's all those kind of uh, little changes that have to probably be implemented and kind of uh, figure out how to kind of uh, some uh, kind of appeal to, to the, to the, to the, to the audience and not just and beyond players. We were talking uh, earlier about motivating young players to be an umpire. Um, but we also had a question of what age do you think kids are ready to be trained as an umpire? Carolina, do you want to start? Well, I think nowadays uh, you can start your umpire career at, when you are 10 or 12 years old. Uh, when I start to umpire, the average age was when you are 25, 30. And now we have some examples that are very young umpires are already umpired uh, an Olympic final game. As Laurin, I think she umpired a final when she was 26 or 25. That was amazing. But it's not only because she was good enough, it was she started to do it when she was young. So I think nowadays, uh, as soon as you can start it, it's, it's fine. And I think it's, it's good for, for, I don't know, for feeling in another way. I think the, the, the young uh, matches need to have young umpires and this is start to, to get a, a different um, a feeling about the umpire. I think if then everybody will feel that the umpire is part of the game and not we, someone put on there to, to be like the policeman, you know? I, I uh, again, I agree with Carolina. I, I could probably add that um, if I would... Uh, make a decision i would uh, at every club every training game they do i would uh, make sure that every player picks up a whistle every now and then and kind of experience being on the on the other side and making those decisions and and kind of understanding what it takes and what it comes from with um on top of that i also saw a question earlier from uh, from germany i think anna if i recall correctly about how to attract younger people to to umpiring so I think giving them opportunity to to whistle and, and, and umpire uh, 
uh, local club games, training games, just to get an experience and, and, and kind of know what umpires on the pitch are feeling as well. But if you want something unusual, I would suggest maybe showing them uh, what where umpiring can can take you and kind of uh, showing people in, for, in, in Germany, Ben Gundgen, uh, and kind of having a great career, just g- going to his first Olympics um, and being an amazing umpire. Uh, then you have Lorene in Belgium, uh, incredible career. And, and there are more and more of those kind of examples coming up uh, just as a kind of inspiration, I would say. Um, and kind of showing that uh, staying with hockey doesn't necessarily mean you have to be a great player. Um, there are other other pathways. Then we have another question um, about uh, the video referee. Um, have you got some feeling of a difference decision between your field empire and uh, the video empire? Carolina, do you want to start? Uh, well, sometimes uh, when you are on the field, uh, you know that when you make a mistake, and sometimes you already know wh- which is the answer that you will receive. Um, and sometimes you are completely uh, assorted when <laughs> with the decision that you receive, but. Is part of the game. It's just... How does it make you you feel that the decision is is different when you were planning on? Well, having as as I told you uh, before, first we we feel that uh, for I think angry or stressful or unhappy and. But now we are a team. So if the other umpire is, uh, give you an advice or a decision, so it's OK. I trust on on the um, video umpire decision. So it's not a deal anymore for me. It took many years, but finally, <laughs> I get it. <laughs> um, absolutely. Uh, like Carolina said, I mean, I'm just going to be here uh, kind of confirming uh, throughout the whole evening what Carolina is saying, <laughs> right? Uh, I see my role now here. Uh, but it, 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 uh, it's very true. I mean, at the very beginning of the process, you sometimes could maybe people would take it very personal. But the sooner you realize it's not personal, it's a, pr- it's a procedure, it's a system in place to avoid big mistakes, avoid frustration. It's actually a tool that can help us and you you make it your friend not your uh, enemy then uh, the sooner the better uh, because um it's there for a reason and it's it's part of the game now at the highest level um and i i i welcome decisions and i i i, I can't say that i love when my decisions being changed but kind of dealing with that it's a it's a sign of uh, i would say maturity uh and kind of understanding what is is there for um, and, you know, FIH or tournament organizers are not spending thousands of dollars on putting a video umpiring system uh, at every tournament just to kind of uh, make us uh, look like fools. No, it's, it's the other way r- around. It, it's, it's there to help us. Yeah, true. I, I also think this is um, super interesting about our sport that is open to, for example, start experimenting with video umpiring when no one was doing it, or start experimenting with umpiring, umpires having their own microphone so you can hear what they're saying to each other. Uh, what are other things that you think umpires or in general hockey could experiment for the sake of umpiring? Uh, well, in the in Tokyo, some of them probably used the head camera that was quite new for us. Uh, I don't know what more are coming. Luckily, I'm out now. 
I just uh, I just want to make a comment here because I didn't realize Carolina is, is retiring. Uh, there was no announcement. There was no <laughs> cake. There was no party. So uh, if yes. I can just take that moment and kind of well, that's a huge news and uh, kind of Carolina, congratulations on a on a kind of great career uh, as well. Okay, thank you. Uh, and and hopefully you stay with the sport again. Uh, you know, even when umpire is retiring, there is there is uh, other opportunities to to yes. stay, and uh, hopefully, true. you know, Carolina has so much knowledge and get, has so much experience that uh, we would be so lucky to 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 kind of have her train the uh, the future umpires. Yes, I'm glad she confirms. I mean that uh, that's a that's a good sign. Um, and now I forgot what the original question was. So uh... <laughs> no worries. It was just about uh, in, yeah, also with the head cameras, with the video empiring oh, that yeah. we want to ask us. What we change? Yeah. I don't know. I mean, Carolina, like the cameras. Uh, um, I'm sure EHF, EHL will figure something out, and the people in the marketing departments uh, of of different uh, associations will. Will come up with some some innovative uh, stuff, um, just like we we kind of led the way with uh, video referral, just like we're leading the way with um, you know uh, self pass or no offsides or you know EHL has tested quite a lot of rules um, over the first initial seasons. I I would love to see as an experiment to um, take penalty corners out of the game and kind of uh, do a shootout one-on-one -on -one instead, or maybe two-on-two. -two. Yes. So, something, uh, I feel penalty corners are, well, they could be dangerous. considered quite dangerous, yeah. Um, yes. uh, so so kind of maybe there is a way to uh, have a tournament somewhere, a friendly, just to see what uh, what would that uh, come up with. And I, 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 I can't take uh, kind of credit for that idea. It's, I've, I've, it's been circling around or... or um, so who knows? Maybe uh, maybe this will uh, come up. Yes. W would there be any any particular uh, new improvement that would help you as an umpire? For example, the the head uh, sets with the cameras, or having more umpires in the field, one per quarter, for example. Have you thought of anything that could make your life as an umpire easier, or no? Or you think? Right now, the sport is in a good moment. You have anything you need. You have the empire video when you need it. I'm, I'm a conservative. So I'm going to say uh, we're good as we are uh, as, a, as an umpire. Uh, but um, there are people saying that, you know, if you stay in the same place that me and the whole world is going forward, that means you're going backwards. So I, I would welcome new kind of uh, um, uh, new technology. Uh, I think that's that's where the kind of improvements gonna come from. Uh, maybe new camera angles. Um, it, it's um, I, I don't know. I mean, I, I I can't come up with. I'm sure it's, it's, there'll be there'll be new stuff coming up uh, as there always is. Yes. We're gonna move on. I to wanted, a... I'm gonna I'm gonna call out a, a question. Uh, and sorry, guys. I'm gonna just jump jump right in here. Andre is, is asking, uh, are umpires trying to be less serious than they were in the past? Um, and and uh, where, you, where do you draw the line between being natural and controlling emotions? Um, uh, so Carolina can probably say about uh, controlling emotions uh, coming, coming from Argentina. Uh, I would say uh, that I think it's just a, a new generation uh, of umpires. There's a different approach. There is, uh, and pretty much every umpire is different uh, on the different personality. And that, I think what we are encouraged to do is kind of uh, let that personality show uh, on the pitch, not kind of uh, hide behind the wall. Don't, we're not, we don't all have to be the same cutouts of a kind of perfect umpire. So I think uh, that encouragement to show your personality, that's, that's kind of the, uh, that's where it's coming from. Um, yes. And sometimes depend which match are you umpiring. There are some matches that maybe need more from you. Uh, strong whistle, quick whistle, 
uh, body message, uh, and there are other matches that maybe they didn't need an umpire. So I think it's a mix between Martin say and the context of the game. Yeah, I think that's just a perfect way to end the session. Unfortunately, uh, we've been here for 45 minutes, even though it seems yeah. like a lot less. Uh, I want to thank personally Martin and Carolina, both of you, for your great answers, great insights about the sports and about umpiring in general. Uh, and for the rest of you, we'll be right here for the last session in about 15 minutes for another amazing chat. Thank you, guys. Okay. Well, thank you very much. Thank, thank you, Marcin. Thank you. Thank you, Sergio. Thank you.